Let's take a look at an example regression, and uh, this is from a paper by Charles uh, Kenny um, and, uh, and his co-author, uh, Dev Patel. Uh, the paper is called Gender Laws, Values, and Outcomes, Evidence from the World Values Survey. And the World Values Survey is a survey done around the world, uh, about 300,000 respondents. Uh, individuals uh, asking a whole set of questions about uh, about values and uh, you can see here the number of observations is very large 300 uh, 300,000 one of the questions that is asked in this world values survey is about gender rights and one question asks whether you the respondent agree or disagree with this statement when jobs are scarce men have more of a right to a job than women um, and this is a question that gets at some basic uh, gender norms that many societies have, that men are the breadwinners and women are the homemakers, and uh, men should have more rights to jobs than women do. Um, so Kenny and Patel wanted to examine how this, how widespread this attitude or norm or preference is and what factors might be associated with variation in this norm around the world. And so what you have is an outcome variable. Do you uh, agree or disagree with this? And it's been recoded so that a higher number means your Sorry, a higher number means that you're more favorable to women. So higher number means you're more favorable, that is, you're less likely to agree with saying that uh, men have uh, more of a right to a job than women do. So higher number means uh, more. And now, first variable in, the, in regression, um, uh, well, uh, regression uh, two is uh, showing us that uh, as the years go by, so as years advance by one, so this is a variable that just goes up by one each year in which the survey, uh, for different years that the survey was done, um, the uh, uh, agreement with uh, the more uh, female-friendly version that uh, men don't have, or disagreeing that men have rights to a job, uh, increases. Um, so if you're a believer in gender equality, then that's a, uh, a good sign that the global community uh, around the world is uh, changing to be more in agreement that there shouldn't be uh, gender preferences for um, jobs. So our second, uh, our specification three, then starts including a dummy variable for female, and what we see in this dummy variable for female is that um, uh, if you are female, you're 0.21 higher on this uh, index. So we don't know exactly, uh, for our purposes, we don't know exactly how this index is scaled, so we're not going to worry about the interpretation. Uh, but just say, uh, in terms of what the units are, just say when you're a female, you're more likely to agree that jobs should be gender um gender equal. Uh, our next coefficient uh, on age is a negative coefficient and statistically significant. Notice that the t statistics are in parentheses here, not the standard error. So t statistic greater in absolute value than 1.96 is uh, the usual indicator for statistical significance. So um, the older you are, the less you agree that women should have the same rights as men. Um, the higher income you are, the more you agree that women should have higher, uh, should have just as much rights as uh, men do. The more education you have, it's almost being in the high levels of education is almost the same as. Uh, being uh, female in that you're much more likely to say that uh, women and men should have equal rights. That is, you're going to disagree that uh, men should have more rights to a job than women. Uh, and the lower your education level, the more you're likely to think that men should have uh, 
the job. Now, wouldn't wouldn't it be interesting to interact uh, education levels with males and females? Uh, we might imagine that higher income females might be more traditional than lower income females, uh, lower educated females, right? Um, so that that certainly might be a hypothesis that we could test with the looking at the coefficient on the interaction term between female and level of education. Uh, so we go down different specifications. Notice that the difference between 3 and 4 uh, here is uh, that uh, 3 includes dummy variables for countries and dummy variables for every year, and uh, 4 does not include those dummy variables for country. But uh, we notice that the coefficients don't uh, change very much, suggesting that these are general um, changes or general correlations between uh, the explanatory variables and the outcome variable uh, and and not so uh, particular to uh, to varying a lot uh, by by country or not having reverse relationships in some countries and uh, going in the other direction in in other countries in our next regression we have no country fixed effects but just year effects and we again see sort of very similar coefficients um, in uh, regression 6 we include uh, GDP per capita and uh, we see a pretty significant positive uh, relationship so this is the log of a GDP per capita so remember if it's a log coefficient so it's a linear log so we divide the coefficient by a hundred and then we say that a uh, one percent change in the log of GDP is associated with a point zero one a point zero zero one seven two change in in the uh, outcome so not not a very big uh, coefficient when we start um, looking at the magnitude of that uh, that coefficient um, then we have uh, some other specifications net primary enrollment but I think that's the gist of it interpreting these uh, coefficients our R square is about uh, um, about 10 to 20 percent right so about 10 point 0 0.10 to about 0 0.18, um, depending on on the specification. So that's a regression that uh, we have uh, now interpreted. We have a better idea of what the coefficients mean.